Welcome to October, everybody, and welcome to Morning Mix on a Monday. It's Cliff and Zana. How That's are you? That's right. It's already October. Wow. Doing well. How are you? This year has flown by. You always hear that, but my gosh. No, it really is. Yeah, it, it really is flying by. October, just a few more minutes, mm. months left. And you know what? People are already in spooky season because I'm walking around <laughs> yes. the neighborhood and yes. everyone has the skeletons out and everything. Mm. And I'm like, really? It's that time already? <laughs> You know, I posted a photo. I was at uh, I was at the Walmart in North Augusta last week. You know, trying to get some pool supplies. The pool supplies are almost already gone. They've already got the Christmas trees out. Really? Too soon. It's too soon. Oh. Yes. I mean, come on. Christmas it's still 80 trees. degrees outside. Okay then. Yeah. I mean, I like Christmas in July too, just like anybody else. But too soon. I agree. No, okay. it, it really is too soon. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Okay, well, we're, at least we're on the same page here, too. Yeah. Uh, it was a busy weekend. And by the way, welcome to the busy season here in the CSRA. There's guaranteed at least three things are going to be happening every weekend for the next couple of months, no, I would say. Yeah, you're right. But at least the weather was beautiful was. for all of the events taking place outside. Mm -hmm. I think I spent 75% of my weekend <laughs> outdoors just because it was so nice. Right. I mean, even going to Evanstown Center Park, just to the dog park this weekend, I spent a few hours there yesterday. I mean, amazing. We spent some time there the and day before, we too. we spent, the, yeah, some time there Saturday morning. We mentioned it all week last week, but we went to the Alzheimer's Walk. I know we have some photos to show from there, but... What a great turnout. Mm -hmm. It was so nice. It was so nice to attend and see so many friendly faces. Those, all those, uh, these are just the, uh, just the shots from the stage where we were. And uh, just, again, the reaction from there. And thank, thanks again for uh, uh, asking Zana and myself to uh, be part of the uh, Alzheimer's Walk. What a great time and a great turnout. And our friend there, Chris. Chris Fisher. Yep. Thank you, buddy. No, Doing great the, time. Spinning the tunes. <laughs> our selfie with everyone behind us. No. And like I said, a lot of people, uh, you had Remy dressed up. They had the dog costume contest there. Yeah, Remy was Superman. And we had uh, so many other pets mm -hmm. out there dressed up. So that was a fun time, too. Uh, but before Saturday, Friday night, Daniel yep. and I went to the Hispanic Festival. And there I am with the drink I always love to get. You know, you have to get it. I didn't get mine in a, the actual pineapple. Okay. But it was a pina colada and strawberry daiquiri mixed. And they're the guys making it, but it was so good. Oh, yes. It's always my favorite, always my favorite. But then Saturday, we also went over to the Evans Market since that was happening just right there across the street True. in front of the Performing Arts Center. So that was really a fun time. Busy weekend. Again, a lot of events happening. So right. if you did something this weekend, hopefully you enjoyed it. And you were busy, too. Well, Saturday. yeah, I mean, we were obviously we were at the Alzheimer's Walk for that Saturday morning. And uh, it's it's I, I have siblings. Not a lot of people realize this. I've got like a step family, mm -hmm. but we don't say step because, I mean, we've been together for decades now. Uh, but my brothers and my sister uh, in town, also my stepdad, both my, uh, my my little brother, Joey, and my stepdad, Joe, celebrating a birthday this weekend. That's uh, three of the four siblings. Uh, Gina couldn't make it, unfortunately, but uh, that was happening yesterday after no, Saturday afternoon and then Saturday night, a bunch of old uh, local rock DJ friends of mine uh, about eight years ago, 95 Rock went off the air. Well, everybody's still pining for that station. So they had a huge concert at the Riverwalk Saturday night. And a lot of the DJs from uh, from, you know, they're they're in different areas now. Uh, a lot of the original DJs from 95 Rock came back to uh, hang out at the stage. Now, I worked at Eagle 1023, so it was kind of like competing stations. Uh -huh. We all got along. Sure. It's the, it's the companies that don't get along. Yeah. I thought DJs get along fine. So, yeah, everybody came over afterwards and ate all of the food that uh, my family did not eat because we had a lot left over for Saturday. Oh, well. I'll be eating we leftovers. We need some food here on Morning Mix, then. The rest. I have half a cake. <laughs> okay. We know how cake fast the, the cake goes here. <laughs> yeah, bring cake on uh, the mix. At the TV like station. It. So, yeah. Well, that leads us to our social question. Go ahead and do it right now. So, we told you about our weekend and what we did, what we thought was the best. What was the best part of your weekend? You can tell us on our Facebook page at Morning Mix WRDW. Uh, some good times already. Uh, people are already uh, commenting. Oh, a lot yeah. of people saying football. I was going to say 
watching the games. I'm not surprised. And watching out for certain people <laughs> at the games. I'm just glad my parents answered the phone yesterday when I called because that's all they do on Sunday. <laughs> and so I'm glad I got to talk to them. I, I always say it's like I'm about five seconds away from looking at a missed call. Uh, yeah. just, I called just early, not. though. It wasn't quite noon over there. so. <laughs> Well, speaking of the football team, I mean, it appears everybody is getting behind this love story. Uh, so Taylor Swift, she might not be the cheer captain, but that didn't stop her from cheering on Kansas City Chiefs yesterday. The superstar who's rumored, can we get past the rumor now, to be dating tight end Travis Kelsey attended the team's away game against the New York Jets. Uh, fans everywhere were so enchanted with Taylor Swift. We're here for Taylor. I'm an even bigger football fan now because of Taylor Swift. I think it's crazy. I mean, I think it's great, you know, but I do think it's nuts that how, how all of a sudden everything's skyrocketing because of Swift. What's your favorite Taylor Swift song? Oh, he's such a big fan. Hells no. Who's Taylor Swift? I don't know who Taylor Swift is. J E T S, yes, yes, yes. Woo! Number one, baby. Number one. It's the hottest couple in entertainment right now. You know, sports entertainment, musical entertainment. We're going to show the world how hot the two of these are together in the parking lot. I mean, it's just what we do as Jet fans. We're very welcoming in what we do. No, they didn't. They Ooh. did. And I know the Swifties probably came and attacked and put the flames out. So. Hopefully there's no bad blood, right, between Swift and those Jet fans. The Jets ended up losing the game 23-20. to 20. So, <laughs> Man, i got to say, my wife is probably one of the biggest Chiefs fans in town. Uh, I will I'm, go ahead and just throw it out there. She is, a not a, she is not a Swifty fan. Well, I'm going to tell you, she's she, not. She she's might not. get her jersey fixed and add Swift. Uh, I don't think that's ever going to happen anytime <laughs> soon. Uh, you know, we were talking about this last week, trying to figure out what name you would call them. And apparently it's already been decided. Trailer. Travis Taylor. I know. Trailer. I don't like it. I don't like it either. <laughs> okay. All right. So time to play for the pets. You know, you win. Pets win. Everybody wins, right? Well, we'll be talking with the friends of the animal shelter about their eighth annual golf tournament. That's coming up next here on Morning Mix. So nice to meet you, Cliff. I'm a fan. I've been in the Heart Bard Show for 20 years.
Welcome back to Morning Mix. Friends of the Animal Shelter in Aiken is hosting their eighth annual golf tournament later this month. Playing for the pets will benefit the Aiken County Animal Shelter and the work that they do with shelter animals. Liddy Hansen is chairperson with FOTAS and she has all the info and she joins us this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks it's wonderful us. to be here. Uh, so this is the eighth annual golf tournament. Tell us a little bit about what FOTAS is and how it helps the Aiken County Animal Shelter. Absolutely. Now FOTAS uh, the Friends of the Animal Shelter for Aiken County, uh, was formed in 2009. Unfortunately, the South doesn't have a great reputation for spaying and neutering, so we have an overpopulation of pets. And back in 2009, our shelter had to euthanize more than 90% of the animals that were brought in. And we thought there has to be a better way. So photos began and through our variety of programs and a whole army of volunteers. We are happy to say that today, over 4,000 animals each year are saved and less than 4% are euthanized. And those that are, are too sick or too injured to be helped. Okay. Oh man, those numbers really put everything yeah, in absolutely. perspective. And events like the tournament, help you for your cause. Let's talk about the golf tournament October 23rd with a rain date for October 30th. Hopefully the weather is nice. You don't have to use that rain date. What's happening? Well, uh, we start registration at 730. We're at the Reserve Club in Aiken, which is a fabulous golf course. We have two courses there. We'll be utilizing both of them. Now, what makes us a little bit different, our signature part of opening the event is we have a helicopter ball drop. And so all summer long, we've been selling numbered tickets and with a um, corresponding golf ball. Mm -hmm. And we will drop a thousand golf balls uh, around 8.30 that morning. Everybody loves watching it. And then one lucky person is gonna win a thousand dollars if their ball is the first one to get into the hole. Ah, wow. okay. And you can see some of the photos there from the previous events. So yeah, I mean, it is literally a helicopter ball drop. <laughs> okay. Absolutely, absolutely. And it's a big bag of balls. <laughs> you brought up the number 4,000 uh, for the animals a year that the uh, shelter and photos deal with uh, and, and help. How have you seen that number grow in the last couple of years as far as uh, animals not being spayed or neutered? Uh, it's, it's an ongoing problem, but it's an ongoing problem everywhere. We're not unique to that. Um, the problem that we have is we don't have as many homes here that can handle 4,000 animals. So one of the things that FOTUS does is money like from the golf tournament is used to transport animals. We have wonderful partners that are other shelters, no-kill shelters, uh, in the northern part of the country and we communicate with them. We actually make a little resume of each animal. The animals are selected, transported, and most of the time, there's already an adoptable home waiting for them when they get there. And about half of the animals we save end up getting transported. But we also do have an active neutering and spaying program. One of the issues are feral cats. You know, if you have a, one cat, you're gonna have 10 before long. <laughs> And so we have, working with the shelter, with the uh, Aiken County, we trap uh, feral cats, bring them in, neuter them, and then return them to their home environment. They get to live the way they always do, mm -hmm. but they're just not producing exponentially more And you animals. thought you thought bunnies were bad. <laughs> right. <No. laughs> yeah, I've heard about bunnies too. <laughs> no, really nice. So a group that works with a lot of agencies to help these uh, animals, for sure. If people cannot, attend the tournament, how else can they help? Well, we're always looking for volunteers. We have a huge army of volunteers who come in and walk these dogs, socialize them. Um, they write the little resumes that say, hey, if you're looking for a dog, this dog is a couch potato. So if you're looking for your kids to play ball, right. this not, may not be your dog, but you can donate online. Uh, you can bring us dog food and cat food, and you can bring us warm blankets. Um, and t uh, animal toys to play with. And we'd love it if you'd come out and volunteer. That's always uh, great for us, and we can never thank our volunteers enough. They are the heart and soul of FOTUS. They're the reason we're successful. It, it truly is a labor of love. Uh, you see photusaken.org right there on the screen is where you can get the information. Let's quickly recap the information for the golf tournament. When and where? Yes, it's October 23rd. 
uh, at the Reserve Club in Aiken. Uh, it's $125 per player, and you don't have to have a full team. If it's just a pair of you or one of you, we'll uh, fix you up. You get a wonderful breakfast that's been donated by It's All Good, and we have a We'll have Bloody Marys from Grumpy's Sports Bar, so that's great. <laughs> and it includes lunch. We've got some fun prizes. It's going to be a great day for a wonderful cause because and these animals, their lives are in our hands. Sure. Okay, we'll go out and have a good time and have a Bloody Mary as well. Okay, maybe that'll help you get a hole in one. That, that, would, that would help you. Lydia, thanks so much. Thanks so much for having me. Tim, you've been called out as far as the weather for uh, that date. Yes. Two and a half weeks away, so yeah. uh, we'll shoot for the moon. It'll be beautiful like it is today. Maybe it will, maybe not. But uh, it more than likely will probably start cooling down just a touch. Kind of getting that far into October. We're going to eventually see the temperatures drop, but uh, that's we're going to put the pause button on that till probably the end of the weekend. Gorgeous morning, perfect afternoon, first full week of October. It's going to be just like it was this past weekend, sunny and dry 64 right now after bottoming out about the middle to uh, upper 50s here. Got a gorgeous shot over the Thurman Dam. Look at that gorgeous blue skies just about anywhere. Winds uh, kind of going back about three to six. But that planner as we move through the rest of the day is looking just about perfect here. Sailing through with a breeze about five to ten sunny skies. I uh, will start moving into that evening planner. It feels great in the evening too. just about six, seven o'clock. The air is really dry. There's no humidity outside, so the air really gets a chance to kind of cool down quickly before the sun sets. We have middle 60s to upper 50s, kind of that 58, 64 mark. It's about the coolest range of temperatures that we'll see here for the uh, next half hour or so. We'll start seeing more of those middle and upper 60s come in. But everybody's about where it should be this time of year, 84. That's about perfect here. Looking for rain, you're more than likely not going to find it here. Measurable precipitation is going to be holding off for the next five days. We'll generally keep the winds mainly from the northeast today. Middle 80s there at about 3 to 5 o'clock, and that's what the rest of the out look for the week is going to have other than clouding up a bit more by the time we get to Friday. I'd say we're uh, just about uh, on track looking fairly consistent with mornings in the upper 50s and 60s. We'll drop to about the mid and low 70s by Sunday, so that's kind of over the next seven days. The only change we're going to see. I don't think you could have beaten the weather it was this great. weekend. It was great. Yeah, I was, was outside just about all of Saturday yeah. from sun up to sundown. Mm -hmm. It was great. Me too. All right. Okay. Too. Keep it coming. Be that then. way for the next couple of days. Hopefully. That's what you got. All right, a true Phillies fan was denied entrance to the park uh, for fear his emotional support animal would eat more than just baseballs. Cole Higgins has today's take a look at this. This bear just invited himself to lunch. In San Pedro Garza Garcia, Nuevo Leon, Mexico, this black bear feasted right on the picnic table. Yo, yo, boo boo. Come on, it had to be said. The mom and son kept their cool. Black bears aren't usually aggressive, but the uninvited guest didn't even help clean up. Unbearable. Nom, nom, nom. Cunning and carnivorous, here's another animal you wouldn't want to have lunch with. But meet Wally the gator, who just wanted to catch a foul ball. A Phillies fan was denied entrance to the park because of his emotional support animal. He likes his chin rub. Who doesn't need a little emotional support? The owner has had Wally for seven years. Thousands of alligators in Pennsylvania. Really? People get them for pets? Watch where you point that finger. Look at the little guy. I wonder where he sleeps. Sometimes in my bed, sometimes in the pond, sometimes on the table. Now children always ask permission before petting an alligator. Oh, cuddly Wally. For Take a Look at This, I'm Cole Higgins. Nope. Oh, please nope. ask permission. Yes, yes. Don't just go up and pet. Okay, we've <laughs> you've jumped the shark here on these guys. Oh, man. Your, your gator, your emotional support animal is a gator. Yeah, it's, okay. Anything's possible. You know, well, people have snakes. Apparently. People have snakes and all kinds snakes of Snakes is, okay, that's one thing. But a gator, an alligator. You, you expect to take an alligator into a ballpark? Well, that's how I feel about you a snake. You expect too much. Okay. <laughs> all right, coming up, it's time to praise and worship, an event you do not want to miss, full of joy of the Lord. We're going to tell you about the Georgia Mass Choirs. I still have a praise inside of me next.
lounge chairs on the left. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. We can leave this right here. Absolutely. Thank yep. you. Doing well in yourself. Good. I'm Tamara Baldwin, and my hands are cold. I'm sorry. Oh, you're fine. Tamara Baldwin. Good morning. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Red, I got We're the gonna get yeah, my look on. But yes. <laughs> okay, where do you want? Oh, here. I'll have you. Here. Get the present. I'm fundraising. Hi, man. Hey, how are you? I'm good. Thank, Thank you. you. How do you say your name? Lorelia. Lorelia. Okay, yes, Santa, that's nice fine. To nice to meet you, Dana. Okay, Lorelia. Where that people can go for um, information on tickets and stuff? I couldn't find it. So you have two locations. You can go to Eventbrite, or you can go to the Augusta Alumni page, which is um, Augusta Alumni. D oh, see. Augusta yeah. Alumni yeah. Chapter. Okay. Mike, really quick, it's going to hit but your Eventbrite necklace. As well. Eventbrite is the base, yeah, or you can do um, the Augusta Alumni, um, Augusta Alumni Delta Sigma Theta Sorority. Okay. Dot org. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> yeah. So. Or Eventbrite and Google the search the event. Yes. Okay. Do I need to move in some or am I good? Okay. Hey there, you're watching Morning Mix, a worship experience that will not be forgotten. Reverend Milton Bigham and the Georgia Mass Choir, I Still Have a Praise Inside of Me, is sure to fill you with the joy of the Lord. If you're ready to praise, then mark your calendars for this Sunday. Here to tell us more about the event is Tamara Baldwin, fundraising chair, and Lorelia Hardy, president of the Augusta Alumni Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority, Incorporated. Thanks, ladies, for joining us. Good morning. Good morning. It's nice to have you on the show. So before we get to the event that's happening Sunday, tell us about Delta Sigma Theta Sorority and its involvement in the community, Lorelia. Delta Sigma Theta is an organization of college-educated women committed to the constructive development of its members and with public service with a primary focus in the black community. Augusta Alumni Chapter is a, one of many of the many chapters around the world that are a part of this organization. Our chapter has currently 191 members, and we are on the ground, boots on the ground, ready for public service. We are social action. All right, and uh, some of that's going to be happening this Sunday. The event taking place uh, 5 p.m. at Macedonia Church of Augusta. Tamara, what can people expect? Well, one thing you can expect is just to praise the Lord. Um, the Georgia Mass Choir has been in existence for over 40 years, and they're coming here for a worship experience. They're bringing over 40 members of their um, choir all across the Georgia, all across Georgia, and all the money um, was going to be used for our scholarship. So you can come and just come and enjoy all of the. Um, music that they've had in the last 40 years. And also, one of the things I would like to um, state is they're also going to be doing an honorarium to our one and only James Bignum, who's from Augusta, um, from the Lucy Laney High School. Okay, there you go. It's certainly a time that you don't want to miss. Sounds fun. Let's talk about the proceeds. You mentioned a little bit, Lorelia. Uh, it's benefiting youth in our community. Talk to us about that. We offer a scholarship program, and the scholarships that we give are driven basically by the funds that we raise. Uh, our community, community has always been very supportive of our scholarships, 
and the more they give, the more we're able to give to our, to our youth. We also have three youth groups that we sponsor as part of the chapter. Uh, the Embody group, which is a group for males, uh, middle school to high school. We also do Delta Gems, which is the older, older girls group. We have Delta Academy, which is 11 through 15. And these programs are ongoing programs through the year that we work through with our, with our sorority. And what, what's it like being part of an organization that, I mean, it gives back so much to the community? It's been fantastic for me. Yeah. Uh, service, I've always been service oriented, and this was just a, a way for me to just get out there and be, and be active, as active as possible. We have a group of dedicated women who understand service, and they work very hard to make sure that people understand it's what we give back that's most important and not so much what we do. Of course, we enjoy the, the, the social part as well, but it's service is what we do. No, that's amazing what you're doing in our community, making a difference. Mm -hmm. Tamara, what do you want people to take away from this event when they attend Sunday? One thing I would like for them to remember that we were founded on Christian belief. So having this fundraiser is going back to one of the reasons that we exist. Scholarships is the, the money we're raising, and then also service, social actions, and just come and give, come enjoy yourself. Um, also, just know that the money that you're um, giving towards this fundraiser stays right here in Burke County and Richmond County Youth. All right, and uh, let's go over the uh, details again real quick. Uh, when and where for the event? It's going to be held this Sunday, October 8th, starting at 5 p.m. at uh, Macedonia Church of Augusta, and it will begin at 5 p.m. All right. You can grab your tickets. Again, find that online at eventbrite.com. Thanks, Thanks, ladies. Thanks so much well, for joining us. Thank you for having us. Listen to this. Can you believe it's October already? No. <laughs> yeah, years flying by. If you've been thinking about giving up alcohol or abstaining for a bit, you might want to try a new trend called Sober October. Experts say giving up alcohol, even for a short time, can help your health. And today's Health Minute, Mandy Gaither has more on how to have a successful Sober October. In many settings, it's become a social norm, but alcohol misuse isn't good for your health, and giving up drinking, even for a short time, could help you feel better. A better sleep, reduce stress and anxiety levels, and it also can reduce the risk of certain um, chronic illnesses. If you're planning a sober October, don't do it alone. Surround yourself with supportive family and friends, says registered dietitian Maria Meza Martinez with Orlando Health. Just to make sure that you have not only accountability, but also support system. It might be a big change for some. If you're giving up alcohol, Martina says not to overdo it. Don't try a new diet trend at the same time or the latest exercise challenge. We just do it one thing at a time, so don't overwhelm yourself. If you're a social drinker missing out on a cocktail, try a mocktail instead. We have everything that a regular cocktail would have except the alcohol. You can also set yourself up for success by focusing on what you're adding to your life rather than what's being taken away. If they see that their health is improving, then they can continue this a journey past a sober October. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. That's the way to do it right there. Not a bad thing to do, especially when it comes to your health and like she said, Mocktails can be the way to go to. Exactly. They're still really good and fruity, okay? On the way, we're going to tell you about the upcoming Pace Day riding event benefiting the Georgia Cancer Center, and there's still time to be a part of it all. The president of Pace Line joins us next here on Morning Mix.
We're going to get a oh, one. Yeah. Was that? No, really? I'm healed. Okay. I'm all healed. You're all healed. Good, good. good. Oh, Bad stitches. Gonna... I remember. Let's see. Okay. Yep. Sure. Let's... All right, it's time to grab the bikes, the helmets, the water bottles. As you get ready, we are just a few weeks to Paceline 2023, a great ride for a great cause. That's right, and this morning we have President of Paceline, Martin Jones, as well as CEO of the Medical College of Georgia Foundation, Ian Mercier, joining us this morning to tell us all about the event happening Thanks for joining us, guys. Yeah, good morning. Good morning. All right. All right. And nice to have you back, Martin. And uh, I can tell you like our mug right here. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> he right. loves our mug. That's right. For people that may not be familiar at home about Paceline, tell us about what it is and why it was started. Yeah, so Paceline, I want to be clear about this, is an all-year-round movement. It really is. A, think of it as our community movement to cure cancer faster. So us getting together as a community, and, uh, and many folks think of it, Involved as our as our bike event, like we have a huge fundraising bike right. event, we're talking about at the moment. But that really is a culmination of a year-round effort for our community itself, getting around this cause, which is to cure cancer faster. And uh, the weekend of October fourteenth, that's Pace Day. We'll be starting at the uh, Common. What uh, what are the steps to do if someone wants to participate or help out, whether they're on the bike or off? Yeah, yeah, good question. So uh, this is our proudly, you know, want to say it's our fifth year running. So with the exception of the pandemic, this is our fourth main event this pace day. Um, and we've already got more riders, more participants, more volunteers we've ever had before. We can't do this without volunteers. We have something like 300 volunteers. We still need a few more. Right. So volunteering is open on our website, paceline.org. Uh, it is a fantastic event. Everybody is welcome as a place for all abilities. Uh, it really doesn't matter whether you're fit, unfit. It's about having a spirit for curing cancer faster in your heart. Mm -hmm. And this is, our, as I say, a community effort. So registration is free. I want to say that too. 
Um, and there's even a downtown loop that we ran, started last year, very successful. For those who perhaps don't want to ride on the open road, they can do so on a loop around downtown Augusta. So there's one mile loops and do as many loops as you wish. A little bit safer. Exactly. People that are, it, may not be something as something uh, for everyone. Yes. That's at. why this is yes. a great event for anyone at home that wants to participate. Ian, this is the fifth year of PaceLine assisting the foundation. Talk to us about how this monetary uh, donation has helped. Yeah, you know, PaceLine has sort of this unique uh, aspect to it, and that is 100% of the funds that are raised by the riders and all participants goes to cancer research. So the work that you're doing out raising funds with your family, your friends, when you're on the bike, all of that effort goes directly towards cancer research uh, at the Georgia Cancer Center. So the foundation has simply been that funding partner for these five years. Um, you know, PaceLine, as Martin said, is a movement. It's an all-year movement. And so there are things that are happening all throughout the year. You know, it culminates on Pace Day. Uh, so all of the work that's being done not just in the community, but at the Cancer Center through PaceLine. It certainly, it takes a lot of work, it takes a lot of effort, and the foundation is very, very proud to be a funding partner for PaceLine. And let's, let's just dive a little bit deeper into that. Exactly what kind of research is being done there for it? Yeah, great question. Uh, all kinds of research. It's not really focused in on one particular cancer. Um, the specific research, I think, is it's more important to focus on the type of researcher that's doing the work. And so PaceLine is sort of unique in that it provides these seed grants. So a lot of research faculty at the George Cancer Center, um, they are doing work that leads to these much larger uh, NCI, National Cancer Institute, or NIH grants, which are in the millions of dollars. These are extremely competitive. And so what PaceLine does is it gets a lot of these younger researchers an opportunity to collect data, to go out and evaluate um, whatever it is they're researching, and then that leads to the opportunity for much, much larger cancer-supported research grants. So I think that's, that's what it is. It's sort of like a force multiplier, if you will. Okay, everyone participating, you're writing for a cause and helping in the fight for cancer research. Let's go over the details, Martin, for Pace Day really quick, and for anyone that wants to volunteer because you still need more people. We still need more volunteers. Uh, I get asked all the time, when, when is it too late to register? It's never too late to register and sign up, either as a volunteer or a, a participant as a rider. Uh, the main event, that's the ride itself and the party all happening one day, that's Pace Day. That's a Sunday, the 15th of October. So I think we're 13, 14 days away from, yeah. from that. Um, but I also want to talk to uh, the opening ceremony. It's important for anybody watching um, who perhaps doesn't want to get involved necessarily on the bike, even though that it may be open to all. They might think, oh, I want to come along, just see what this is about. Then there's a great opportunity on Saturday night. We call it opening ceremonies. That's the 14th of October. All of these events, by the way, happening at Augusta Common. Okay. So everything is centered around Augusta Common. On the Saturday evening, between 5 till 8, we'll have live music, cancer stories. We have representatives from a cancer center. If you're a survivor, if you're struggling with cancer right now, if a family member or friend is, and you want to do something and feel like on a local level, come around this course together as a community, we'd love to have you there. It's free, no ticket required. Come along and see what this is about. That's opening ceremony on the 14th, so Saturday the 14th of October, 5 till 8 p.m. And then, of course, the next day is the big event, right. Pace Day, from the morning, all day, focused around Augusta Common. Paceline.org is the place to go, and we want to re-emphasize uh, this. It is a ride, not a race. Correct. All okay. abilities. <laughs> yes. yes. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Martin Egan, thanks so much for joining us here. Thank you, guys. Pleasure. Check it right now. First alert meteorologist Tim Strong coming off of a strong looking weekend uh, into a strong looking week. <laughs> Certainly so here. And this is what we'd like to have for that pace day, wouldn't we? Now, favoring a little bit more into that weekend is maybe probably a little bit of a cooler forecast. But that's all right. It's mid-October. We'll be just fine. We'd love to have a day like this today, a couple of weekends from now. 64 degrees. We have that sunny sky at this point. Light breeze. It's picking up a little bit more about five to eight coming in from the north. We have middle 80s. A pattern like this is what we're sticking with a lot of this week. We're going to continue to see right around average highs. Local temps, most of them still in the 60s. 
We've got a 70 right now out around the government center there in Evans. Thompson, you cool down just a few to from 70 being the warmest right now to a lot more of the mid upper 60s, which will take off. Here's the rest of the week's outlook. Very seasonal here just about every day at average high, which is 84. So between 83 and 85 and absolutely dry here. A little bit of measurable precipitation wouldn't be a bad thing. Uh, unfortunately, today and tomorrow certainly won't, and it doesn't look like we're going to see that much more into the extended planner going in for the rest of the week. So we will pick up a little bit more of a breeze later today, just like we saw from the weekend. Lower to mid 80s this afternoon. Lows tomorrow morning will be just as cool as they were today in the middle and upper 50s. So we've got a good range of 50s and 60s, and we'll have more middle 80s coming our way through tomorrow afternoon. So a really dry week. No change in the forecast until the end of the weekend. The temperatures will finally Finally come in and feel even more like fall, not just for the mornings, but for the afternoons too. We're going to dip into uh, the middle 70s, so that's where kind of the transition happens at the end of the weekend. Until then, another more than sunshine there, gang. Smooth sailing. Yes. All right. Great. Okay. I like this weather. Keep it coming. Mm -hmm. Listen to this, everyone. No one won. <laughs> <laughs> the Powerball, right? No one matched all six okay. numbers Saturday, so now the jackpot is estimated to jump to 1.04 billion. Wow dollars billion it just keeps happening. With a I know it that would be the second largest jackpot this year topped only by a 1.8 billion dollar prize won on July 19th that's right the lottery says uh, two tickets did match enough numbers to score uh, two million dollar winnings okay mm -hmm. five tickets won one million dollars so here's the deal that next drawing is tonight you have until what I think is it seven o'clock to uh, you have until 7 p.m. or so to, to get your tickets. I think that's, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we talked about this before. I'm going to lay it out here right now. Uh, Are you going uh, in? Here's my two dollars. <laughs> OK, then <laughs> we're going to go ahead and just gonna right. get a couple of tickets ourselves. <laughs> the last two billion dollar ones I did buy and I won 10 bucks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I got four numbers and the Powerball, which made oh. it. 10, so I, I got my money back, but then I never went and got it. Oh, I never went. Uh, I, you know, I brought that up last time. week. I've got, I've got tickets it, at home that I just need to sign. This was last year's and though, so I don't think it, does, does it expire? I well, think you yes. have 180 yeah, days. Yeah, you're saying last year? Yeah. yeah if it's last year, you're kind of yeah, yeah. No, you're right. Yeah, that's out of that 10 bucks. Come on now, Tim. Sorry, get your money I back. just didn't want to go to the spot back. and get it. <laughs> <laughs> 7 p.m. You have until then to get your tickets. Okay, that's could be you. Billion dollars. Jeez, give it please. A go again. Give it a go. All this money. October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and coming up, it's our motivational Monday. Well, it's still going to be a motivational Monday. Stay tuned.
All right, Motivational Monday, like I said, right on to some entertainment because sometimes entertainment news can be motivational. motivational. <laughs> Maybe. Country star Casey Musgraves fulfills a bucket list moment and the curtain is set to come down on a Broadway show that won multiple Tonys. Bradley Blackburn has your eye on entertainment. Chicago's too hot. You're right. Time is running out to see some like it hot on Broadway. Producers of the musical announced it will close at the end of the year. The show, based on the 1950s classic film, won four Tonys in 2022, including Best Lead Actor in a Musical for Jay Harrison Gee. A national tour is planned for fall of 2024. Come here, I feel like we did a pretty good job. Country star Casey Musgraves showed off the new wax figure of herself at Madame Tussauds in Nashville. The six-time Grammy winner joked about what she would do with her lifelike double. You know what? Just let me ship her to anything I really actually don't want to go to. And I'll be like, here's this instead. It took a team of 20 London-based artists around six months to create the wax figure. Are you guys ready to win some money? Absolutely. Yes. And the new game show, Loteria Loca, premieres tonight on CBS with host Jaime Camille and band leader Sheila E. Based on the Latin game of chance, contestants compete for a cash prize of up to $1 million. You can also stream the show live and on demand on Paramount+. Plus. That's your Eye on Entertainment, Bradley Blackburn, CBS News, New York. You know, the whole thing with the wax uh, figures, mm -hmm. if you go to Madame Tussauds, I mean, it's kind of a hit, a hit and miss deal. Sometimes say? they get them, not sometimes, I mean, oh, they're like spot sure. on. Sometimes they do, they look so farther, <laughs> so far removed from the actual person they're yeah. supposed to be. The thing is you just can't go like right up on it. Just look afar. <laughs> what if you did look that? Look from afar. And, and the wax figure like, went, <laughs> blinked. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, yeah. uh, no, no, new no. game show. I don't think this is the end of like game shows and things. I think we're going to see those shows kind of picking up more and more. Yeah, I, mm -hmm. I agree. I agree. Okay. You're going to check that one out. Seems like a fun time. Listen to this. The much anticipated Sphere opened Saturday with a performance by U2. The venue will allow artists, creator, and uh, technologists to create extraordinary experiences that take storytelling to the next level. The goal is to use storytelling to transport audiences to new places, both real and imagined. Celebrities in attendance are sharing their thoughts on the new venue. Seeing it from the outside, it does add this whole new look to the kind of Vegas skyline. It's a, it's a, something you've never seen before. It's, it's unlike anything else I've seen before, that's for sure. Amazing. Inside the venue is equipped with 160,000 speakers, over 260 million video pixels, uh, which offers out of this world visuals and a unique experience for visitors. It took five years to complete the high tech venue. Uh, you know, I was in Vegas, not this last summer, but uh, the, the summer before. I didn't see this, but this is amazing. I want to check it out. I don't even need to go inside. I just want to see it from the outside and get my selfie. It is. A, it is literally a one of a kind. Oh my god! It's going to be one of those like popular yeah. stops. If you're in Vegas, you have to see the Sphere, right? I was just looking at how much plane tickets were going right now to Vegas because <laughs> I think I want to go. I would love to see Usher. So, can you, um, Usher, can you take your residency to the Sphere? Can you imagine flying in to Vegas and seeing that uh, all along the skyline? Amazing. Uh, moving on to music now. Rocker Bruce Springsteen has canceled the rest of his shows for the year due to illness. The 74-year-old musician said uh, last Wednesday he's continuing to make steady progress recovering from peptic ulcer disease over the past few weeks. Springsteen said he'll follow doctor's orders and continue treatment through the rest of the year. He previously canceled several shows with the E Street Band last month and earlier this month. So according to the statement, rescheduled dates will be announced this week for those shows and the concerts that were to be held during the rest of this year. The venues will not change, though. Ticket holders who can't make the new 2024 dates and bought through official ticketing companies have 30 days to request a refund. All right, there you go. Now you know. Uh, also, this is just along with the music lines, yeah. and it's like it's the older artists that are having the issues and having to postpone. Aerosmith's farewell tour is going to be a longer goodbye than expected. That's because frontman Steven Tyler needs more time to heal from a serious vocal injury before the band can finish its farewell tour called Peace Out. Earlier this, earlier last month, rather, Tyler announced he was taking a 30 day break from singing due to vocal cord damage, uh, which caused subsequent bleeding. Oh, now the band says the 75 year old singer has fractured his larynx. Ow! Oh. As a result, the band has postponed the rest of the 2023 dates of the farewell tour until next year. The band says new dates will be announced as soon as they know more. How do you fracture your larynx? Oh, my goodness. I don't even, yeah. Don't, uh, uh. 
I just feel like it's painful. Well, uh, yeah. I'm I mean, sure it is, clearly. I broke my voice box. That's something, yeah, I don't and ever as want a, to have to say And as that. an artist. Yeah, that's not the way you want to go out, guys. <laughs> okay. Uh, Darn. Feel better, Stephen. All right. Yeah. More to come on Morning Mix, including your, uh, including your replies to our social question. What was the best thing uh, that happened for your weekend? Plus, Anna's got some good motivational words. That's right. To get your week on, uh, on, the, on the right track. That's coming up next. Well, a popular singer songwriter is going a different direction with his latest release. David Daniel has that and more in today's Hollywood Minute. Ladies and gentlemen, our friend Ed Sheeran. Ed Sheeran has released a new album, Autumn Variations, but don't look for any music videos or promotional singles. He's doing neither for his first independent release on his own label, Gingerbread Man Records. In an interview Friday when the album came out, Sheeran said the move was a way to avoid the pressure of being a major label pop star. There are no expectations because there's no company. The residue is in the seed, and if we use that seed for food production, then it's in the food. It go around spraying the whole forest. You change the whole environment. You don't hear no birds singing? Any insect, nothing. The documentary Into the Weeds looks at the purported toxic legacy of Roundup and the lawsuit by a groundskeeper with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma against the herbicide's manufacturer, as well as the larger questions of human health, biodiversity, and whether we can have a future without pesticides. Into the Weeds is in theaters one night only, Tuesday, October 3rd. Check FathomEvents.com for locations and showtimes. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. All right, let's check out your answers to our social question this morning. What was the best part of your weekend? Uh, obviously, we had a lot of fun at the Alzheimer's Walk. I got to see family. That was the best part. How about yours? Uh, hi, Red Wolf. Finishing a new painting. Okay. okay. Uh, Jim, hey there. Going to church. All right. Connie, eating the delicious chili my husband made on the rec tick. Ooh, okay. John, Laura cooked one of our favorite pasta dishes. It was delicious. Okay. Dawn, college football games. Granted, uh, Uga beat my Auburn Tigers, but I was pulling for the dogs, too, and order my precious twin who passed in June. Go War Eagles and go dogs. All right, Sandra, North Augusta High School, 50th reunion. Such a fun night reconnecting with Minnie. Uh, Norma, I slept all night Friday night without leg cramps. Well, oh. congratulations <laughs> for you. <laughs> all right, good. Before we say goodbye, I want to leave you with this quote. This one says, when advers adversity strikes, that's when you have to be the calmest. Take a step back, stay strong, stay grounded, and press on. LL Cool J said that. All right, good words. Guys, have yourselves a great Monday, and we'll catch you here tomorrow. All right, see you then.